Do you need a new way to use your 3D embossing folders? Today I'm going to do some paper piecing with my embossing folders for a little bit of a different look. Welcome to another color connection with Amber video where I use the color palette from the Altenew Inspiration Challenge to inspire my projects. So I have the Monstera leaves and banana leaves 3D embossing folders here, and I wanted to come up with a different way to use them that goes above and beyond just ink blending or even watercoloring on them. I'm gonna start with the banana leaves 3D embossing folder, and I have a piece of Savoy letterpress paper here. So when I'm using a 3D embossing folder like this, sometimes I find that Nina Classic Crafts can crack a little bit. You can either mist it with a little bit of water so it's more pliable, or you could use a letterpress type of paper because it's meant to be pressed, right? That just kind of makes sense to me. I usually have fantastic results when I use that type of paper, so I highly recommend it. Here you can slightly see that the two leaves in the back of this pattern are slightly discolored. That's because I've put a coat of glue on top of these. Now, um, you can try to use the Altenew glue pin. I found because it has a fine tip point, it, it took a little too long to fill these broad areas. Um, so either use, I would say, a liquid glue or just a super thin layer of glue there. Here I'm just placing the embossed paper back into the folder and it kind of snaps into place because the 3D embossing is pretty deep, has pretty deep grooves. And I'll run this through the die cut machine again. So basically what we have here is this book paper is stuck to the leaves that have glue on top of them. So I'm just gonna gently peel back the paper on the leaves that I know don't have any glue. I'm gonna go slowly because I wanna make sure that the leaves that do have glue, that it does stick really well to those. If your glue has dried for too long, it might not stick as well as you have liked, but what helps is when you run this through the die cutting machine, it's gonna press it down onto that glue really well and you'll get better adhesion that way. So I'm just gonna tear off the excess on the side of the card panel here and I'll just keep tearing these small little bits at a time. So this is a little bit like paper piecing. If you're familiar with that, it's kind of like an old, older card making technique. You don't see it too, too much anymore. At least I don't in the card videos that I watch, but I thought it would be kind of a fun technique to try out with the embossing folders. That's the closest thing that I can come up with. If you have a better name for this technique, let me know in the comments down below. I don't really have a name for this. I haven't really seen anyone else do a technique like this, but if you have and there is a name for it, do let me know in the comments down below. I'm totally loving the tropical vibe that Altenew has going on with their latest stamps and embossing folders, and it reminds me of vintage travel posters, and that's the vibe that I was going for with this technique. I had these old book pages lying on my desk, and so I grabbed them and felt inspired by that. Now, note to self. This particular technique leaves the book pages kind of open and more visible. Like you can read more of the text than what I normally can when I incorporate book pages into my project. So normally I use them for like gel press techniques and the text is usually covered with a lot of paint and that kind of stuff. We are gonna cover this with ink, but with some ink smushing, but it's not gonna completely cover the text. So what that means is you should probably read your book pages before you glue them to your card. Like you will see in the close up photos that measles is on there. <laughs> There's a couple words that I wouldn't necessarily want on my cards, but I wasn't going to start over. So just make sure you're reading your book page before you glue it down. I'm gonna do some ink smushing with Fresh Leaf and Persian Blue Cristi ink, and I'm just gonna spray this with some clean, clear water. What you could also do is ink smush with some of the metallic ink sprays as well. A green or a blue one would work great for this, or if you didn't have both colors, you could ink smush with the ink pad, and then instead of spraying it with water, spray it with one of the metallic ink sprays. Um, so that's another option for you. So I'm just gonna smush this right into there and I wanna make sure that I get color not only on the white leaves, but also on the leaves with the book paper or book pages on it. And I do also like to leave a lot of white space. That's pretty easy to do since again, the 3D embossing folders raise up the paper really quite nicely. So you can leave a lot of great white space in the back of the card. 
So I'm just gonna keep smushing until I'm happy with the amount of coverage that I have here. Ink smushing is one of those techniques that I sometimes forget about. You know, I get caught up with watercolor, but this is such an easy technique to do, which makes it perfect for quick cars and great for beginners. I went ahead and repeated that same process with the Monstera Leaves 3D folder, and here's another example without any book paper. Of course, you wanna let these completely dry, and the last thing is to add a sentiment. I opted for some coral cardstock here, and I've used the Bold Greeting dies, the Thank You die is from Bold Greetings, and the Hello die that you see is actually from the Envelope Liner Set. Here's the two-in-one glue pen, and I'm just going to add these layers together. So I've cut three to four layers of each of these so I can stack it up and get some good dimension. I wanted to make sure that the sentiments had good dimension since there's so much dimension from the 3D embossing. And I believe I did three layers of the coral cardstock, but I added a couple layers of white Nina Classic Crest underneath that just to give it a little bit of a highlight when you turn the card. Here's some close-ups of the finished cards, and I hope that you guys enjoyed these projects today. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you real soon with more inspiration. Hello crafters, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching.